Right, I thought I'd put this just at the beginning of the video. If you only want to see the actual assembly of the parts used in this build, then you might want to skip forward to 15 minutes and about 50 seconds. If you want more detailed explanation on parts we've used and how we build it, then hang on, that's coming up right now. Today we're going to be looking at um, these pots. We're going to make these pots, or we're going to make some of these pots. We're going to do something anyway. Um, ooh, ah. So, got some zip ties just in case we need any spare zip ties or anything like that. And I've got the snivels. <laughs> and there goes my waders. I'm just drying these waders out because I, I know where the leak is. It's down there on the front. There's no hole or anything, but I can see it. I might be able to repair that with some neoprene glue. So. That's the plan anyway. So anyway, pots. What I'm going to do is I went, I actually went down to the garden centre the other day and I picked up some pots. Now, I asked at one place and they didn't have much but they gave me these. But they're a bit thin. Uh, it's because I want a six inch neck. So I went to another place and uh, they sold these. These are only like 88p or something like that for these. Um, probably quite expensive for a plastic pot but as far as 88 pence goes, not too bad. So I got those, but they only had three. I asked if they had any more, but apparently they can get them, but they, they've just run out at the moment. So anyway, I picked up these. Now these are, I think these are six and a half inch or seven inch maybe. There's a tape measure. So these are seven inch, I think. Six and a half, six and a half to the entrance. So down here, six inches, well, it's about five and a half they'd be if I cut them might be okay we might use them we got enough of these baskets but then I went walking around another garden center um, and I saw something which I thought that'll work <laughs> these are for water plants like the baskets you put water plants in all the pots so they're full of holes they're, they're, they're quite strong they're not excessively strong but they obviously because of their like mesh kind of thing they have to make them a certain strength and all the roots will just go through and bust open the pots so so yeah they're fairly strong and they are six and a half at the top but they're not quite as tapered so down the bottom that's five and a half right at the bottom but just slightly up you're looking at nearly six so that would be probably be perfect on top of that well i bought six of them anyway on top of that I don't know if you can see that up there, you've got like a like a ridge, I want to keep that ridge because although it's only a little ridge there, that plastic ridge will add strength once I cut this, it'll keep it strong. If you go through that then you're sort of weakening it, but as you'll see there that pretty much will fit in perfect just out slightly over it or in between it You could, if you squash it a bit. So that I think will be perfect for what we're after. And the most important thing is the depth that they go in. Because the trouble is, if you go and buy a neck from, a, from the like from crab pots, they may be narrow, but they're always pretty much, I think they're all about the same length, even though they get smaller. And a crab pot neck is just way, way too big to, to go in here. There's a one there, look at the one. Yeah, you'll see that that is, it, it gets way too low. And the small ones, again, they, they do stay the same length. So anyway, uh, and the base, now we did talk about the base of these, what I was going to do, I'm actually going to do like I did last time, I'm going to start off with that anyway, where I used an old metal tail frame, you'll see it in a minute, an old metal tail frame because it's metal, I've got it out there and it's just kicking around so I'm going to cut it up to use it, I've got enough to do probably four pots, yeah, probably got enough to do four pots and being they've got pipes I can also pour concrete into the pipes to give it extra weight and that way it doesn't fill up my pot if you think if you put weights inside it you're going to start filling your pot up with rubbish and I need to keep these pots as clear as possible because they're so small anyway let's get on with building these pots Now I'm going to do it offset like I do with my other pots. 
part of the reason for that is that if I do it offset here then I can put a wire through there and we'll have the bait underneath this here that hole will also let out any air that gets trapped underneath this lip so yeah we'll put it there and then we can wire our bait on a wire which then comes up through there and folds out there the question is how's that going to work on The other ones. I'm sure I got another basket somewhere. Hmm, don't know. Now this is obviously the bigger one. I say bigger, it's bigger but it's flatter. So uh, is this going to work on here? See that's a little low although we could cut these up slightly higher so yeah I think that'll work. If I use one of those that mm, I could use those as well. Well, we've got enough to do six pots anyway, but I might do four and then I might do two with the solid next just to have a slight variation. The question is, where are we going to put this one? It'll go kind of on the side again, I suppose, like that. Yeah. We know we've tried this before with a small basket, a little red one. I'll leave a link in the description for that video if you want to see that. And... So we know they work, it's just trying to make them work even better. The idea really is to, if you can make pots this easy, this simple, this light, and catch lobsters, it just makes your life a lot easier than carting huge great pots around, and the expense of great big pots, I mean, you know, you're paying, literally it probably cost you a tenner to make one of these pots, and they're nice and easy to cart around, and if they catch, well, why not, eh? You might even be able to get out of a kayak. Lower it here, you could strap that across the back of your kayak, something similar, lower it down. Obviously there's different types of baskets. So. Right, I'm gonna go and cut steel. Right, now I'm all muddy, because those bars are a bit muddy. And no, uh, I'm not trying to look cool. I don't need sunglasses for that. <laughs> um, these are for, uh, just for eye protection, basically. Um, there used to be some goggles up here, but I don't know where they've gone. Because you can't see out of the thing. Another good thing you can always use is these. If I mean this is old now, so you can see you can't see through that very well from the strimmer. But if you ever do anything big, they're really useful. Those are right, right. So I've cut four for now. I've got another two, but there's some lead and crab pots on top of them at the moment. So I'll cut those another day. We don't. We won't be doing all six today. We'll sort of get on with four. So, I've just cut one of these up and it's not as good as I'd hoped. What's happening is around where the I've cut it, it's it's still fairly weak and it cracks. The plastic is cracking. It's sometimes you get that the old or sometimes it's just the plastic the type of plastic. Trying to find this rubberized plastic was a nightmare. Everything is sort of being made to fall to bits basically. Um, and you might think, well, that's eco-friendly or whatever, but it's not if, if it breaks up into bits, whereas if you've got a plastic pot that lasts for years and you keep reusing the same pot, kind of, you know, if you've got to keep buying new pots every five minutes because they keep falling to bits, it's all right if they degrade, degrade, but quite often the plastic just breaks down to lots of small bits of plastic, which end up in the ground, as opposed to just staying as a pot or a bucket. Plus, if you use rubber in them, rubber is all right. Anyway. Going off the track there, my little rant. <laughs> um, so what I've done is, I've basically, instead of cutting the side, I've left the reinforced part, which is really heavy and thick here, 
and cut that out. Now that only gives me a very small hole, which is not quite what I wanted because I put a, a neck like this in a pot, one of my small pots a long time ago, and the very first lobster that came up was six and a half pounds. So, you know, it would have been nice to have it because I don't think it'll get through that, you know, not with its big claws. But that's big enough to catch normal lobsters, and how often are you going to catch a six and a half is the question. So we'll try it with that because it's only, like I say, a experiment. I can, this is four and a quarter, I can actually stretch it a bit to about four and a, I can grind it back to about four and a half. This one I've cut, although I might cut it back a little bit further yet. I'm just sort of looking from my tape measure, which I'm always putting things down and then I can't find them again. I can use this, I suppose. Um, yeah, see this, this is, well, if I cut it back a bit, it'll go to five inch. So it'll have a five inch diameter and that'll take it back probably to about there, there. So that'll be a perfect sort of size. Again, not as strong as the plastic, but like I say, they're only sort of experimental. And what I'll do is more than likely, I'll probably just zip tie these in the top. And that way, if they break, I can cut them out, get something else, stick it in, and we're good to go again. So we'll try it. I mean, I have used flower pots before and they do tend to last a year. Um, I mean, the biggest problem you normally get is if a crab tries to force its way in, it'll crap, it can break it, or if, uh, Congs when you used to use wires, if you put a wire through and the conger grabs it, it just cuts through the plastic. But we're not using that system, so we should be okay. So I'm just going to use zip ties on these particular ones. There is a reason. I, I've actually zip tied the bottom on, and I think I'm just going to stay with, with that and not actually rope it. And there is a very good reason. Um, let me just turn that on and see how that's going to go. That'll be fine. Yeah, this plastic on these grey ones, it's very, very, look at it, it's absolute trash. Like everything these days, I'm afraid. Nothing's built to last, it's built to fall to bits. So, we will, um, you can see there when I was just doing it, I wasn't putting any pressure on it at all, it just, as soon as you drill in, it was just cracking like that all the time. So we'll do these ones. We'll do them really, really basic. We will. We'll probably just do the two of these, I would think. But like I say, we'll keep them basic. We'll still put them out, and we'll see how long they last. I don't expect them to last long at all. Um, it's possible that the plastic is old; it's been in the sunlight too much, even though they're new baskets, and the sun is degrading them. Like I said, that's my biggest issue with all this so-called you know biodegradable they call it biodegradable but what does it degrade into little tiny pellets and then just end up as small bits you're better off like I say having a full-size bar basket that doesn't actually break it took you know last for years but of course if they lasted for years and you wouldn't keep buying them so it's a messed up world I'm afraid thought I'd show you this before it's gone Sun. Here comes a fish cat. <gasps> He's like, what's going on? Huh? No fish today. This plastic is far better than this one. This one is, um, like I say, a, mo a lot more expensive one. This is a Tesco basket, this one. So, yeah, this plastic shatters quite easy. When you're pushing it through, you can see little cracks, whereas this one, it goes through nice and clean. Um, I don't know who makes these ones here. Oh, hold on. Uh, it just says made in Great Britain. There you go. Wham is a trademark. So it's made by Wham and it's made in the UK. So there you go. And these ones are, these are made for Tesco, but it doesn't tell you where. Unless it's printed. Tom Tarelli, it's called this one. Don't know. Don't know, but they look they look smarter these ones, but they are actually definitely not as strong. Right, get this one finished.
closer look at that. You see from the inside, that's the trap on the neck. Hopefully the lobster will go down. Hopefully through there. Now as you see, I'm using up this old tail rail because it's got bars. There was a couple of these kicking around, so this should be enough to do the pots I want anyway. Um, but you'll see that there's a big gap, obviously some tail rails have that. Now I could just weld in a bar in there, but <coughs> I need to buy a new welder, so that ain't happening. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking a bit of old net that I've got. You can either, you can just string them, I mean, this just is a little bit quicker. And I'm just going to stretch it across like that, string it in place, so it just covers that hole. There you go. Now you saw I banged uh, a couple of holes in the corners. That's if the pot tilts and the air gets trapped there, it'll come out and same with that way. So it's just let the air out, it's just designed. It depends on the kind of basket you buy. Some you won't have this problem. So there you go. That's a lobster pot in 20 minutes or just under 20 minutes. Now, of course, you saw me attach this to fill this hole up possibly. And that's what took the longest. That took me over five, well, what did that take? Five, ten minutes to do that. So, that was the longest part of it. Now, you see, I've only used four there, another one either end. You will have a rope which will tie between here and here, which will hold all that down anyway. And the same the other side, four zip ties there. Now, if you were um, going to build these yourself, you can add in extra ones here you can add in extra ones here, or you can use rope, or you can use string. You can use whatever you want. I'm just showing you the bare minimum basic, ready to go, 20 minute crab pot. And what was the cost? Well, the cost of this basket was £3.95. The cost of the zip ties, let me see. You're talking £1.92 for zip ties. Now, I used two together, but you just do it in one. Depends on your zip ties. I wouldn't buy them too thin. You can get away with less thinner ones, but I wouldn't go too thin on those. You got two, six on the base, four there. You got 10 zip ties. Um, got 100 in the packet, so what's that? 19, 20 pence for zip ties. £3.95 for 
the basket and these costs what did these cost hold on hold on let me have a look I think they're 88p those ones. These are 85p, the, the, these ones. So, I mean, I'd probably use these anyway. I only, I've only put these one in because I want a slightly different one. I would use these ones, so 85p. So what do we got there? We've got 20p on zip ties, one pound five, one pound five, so, for five quid. Five quid, 395, five, one pound five, yeah. A fiver, there you go. Crab pot for a fiver. Now, bearing in mind, I didn't buy the base. The base is just some old scrap I got. Um, you could find your own base. You could put chicken wire on the bottom. You could put crab pot net. And if you're using the pots from the shore, just use net or something like that, something light, and don't put any weights in it. Then you can just walk it down the beach, put some rocks in, and you're good to go. Off the boat, obviously, you need weight, which is what I've got here, and that's probably plenty of weight, although I could put cement, concrete in these pipes to weigh them even heavier if I wanted to. Although I know from past that these are heavy, and this, there's nothing to weigh down. It's only this basket. And like I say, they will they will guarantee to catch uh, lobster. Now, this is just for fun. Again, I wouldn't take this too seriously. You know, if you're going to go out and do pots properly, buy some pot of pots or make yourself some decent pots. This is just for anybody who casually wants to throw some pots over the side, stand the chance to get themselves a lobster. It's just a very basic minimalist and if you don't want to spend money on it like I say five or a pot plus a 20 minutes to make I mean pff, speaks for itself really anyway we'll be taking these out and we'll be testing them and um, well we tested the red one last year and we did really well with it so like I say this will just be um, we'll try this out and we'll try this one this is another one that's in production at the moment just got to stick a base I just need to go out and cut a base for this one because I haven't cut one big enough for this and um, yeah and we'll see how we get on with them. So finally, um, it's probably very unlikely that anybody will want to pinch your pot when it looks like this. <laughs> and there will be one or two people that will say, oh, you're throwing plastic into the sea. Well, I can assure you on a normal crab pot, you've got a metal frame and it's covered in plastic. The netting that goes on a normal crab pot is made of plastic. The necks are made of plastic. And if the pot is roped as well, well, that's plastic. And just to give you a scale, which you would have seen before, that's just the neck of a normal crab pot. And in comparison, you can see that, you know, um, yeah, there's probably a lot less plastic in this than a standard crab pot. Anyway, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a like. And if you haven't already subscribed, consider subscribing because it will go to help grow the channel. Obviously, when you have lower subscribers, lower likes that kind of thing your video is goes to the bottom of the stack and nobody gets to see it and if you want to help the video or you want to help the channel a little bit more consider becoming a patron now i will leave a link in the description below with all that information and the next video that will be coming is probably out in the boat i think i think it'll be a trip out that we did in the summer fishing in the boat or doing the pots or something like that i haven't quite decided but it will be along those lines, and that will be in a few days. So, we shall see you then.